Thank you, and welcome everybody to this session 11 on symmetric cryptography. We'll have two, uh, three talks. The first one is entitled SAEB, a lightweight block cipher-based authenticated encryption with authenticated data mode of operation. It's a paper by Yusuke Naito, Mitsuru Matsui, Takeshi Sugawara, and Daisuke Suzuki. And Yusuke is giving the talk. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Uh, today, uh, I'd like to uh, explain uh, SAAB, that is uh, right rate block cipher based AAD uh, mode of operation. So, this is motivation of our research. Uh, resource constraint devices such as RFA ID, sensor nodes, uh, IoT devices have widely been uh, used, and these devices have access to insecure networks. So uh, these devices require a uh, lightweight cryptographic algorithm for secure communication and authentication. Uh, lightweight block ciphers that are uh, fixed input length primitive have actually actively designed. For example, these uh, many lightweight block ciphers have been designed. Uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, these lightweight devices uh, handle uh, variable length data, including, uh, including data whose length is longer than these block cipher size, sizes. So we need not only a lightweight block cipher, but also a lightweight mode of operation that offers a variable input length cryptographic primitives. And this talk focuses on a lightweight mode of operation. So a block cipher is a, a family of permutations indexed by a key. So this figure shows a block cipher, and uh, it accepts plain text block, uh, in this case n bits, and secret key capital K, and returns the cipher text block of uh, n bits. So uh, fixing a secret key, it becomes a, a n bit permutation. And the block cipher key is randomly drawn. And in uh, block cipher-based mode of operation, uh, the key to block cipher is assumed to be a pseudo-random permutation. And a block cipher-based mode of operation defines the procedure to realize the desired algorithm. Uh, in this case, a block cipher is used as a component. So let's consider uh, CBC encryption mode. Uh, capital M is a plain text block and capital C, the ciphertext block, and by iterating the key to block cipher, uh, variable uh, length plain text blocks can be encrypted. And like this example, using uh, block cipher, uh, these uh, symmetric key algorithm can be obtained. And uh, this talk uh, focuses on uh, block cipher-based uh, authentic uh, authenticated encryption with associated data, uh, AAD for short. So a block cipher-based AED schemes, uh, uh, block cipher-based AED mode of operation defines the uh, procedure to ensure jointly privacy and authenticity. And we consider a uh, NANS-based uh, AED scheme. And uh, NANS-based AED scheme consists of uh, encryption algorithm and decryption algorithm. And the uh, encryption algorithm accepts uh, secret key uh, NANS plain text associated data. Uh, AD for short. And for these inputs, uh, NANS capital M is changed for every encryption procedure. Uh, print text capital M is authenticated and encrypted. And associated data uh, capital A is uh, authenticated but not uh, encrypted. So the encryption algorithm returns the cipher text of the print text and the authentication tab of these inputs. And the decryption algorithm accepts secret key NANS ciphertext associated and the authentication tag. And if these inputs are not forged, then uh, the decryption algorithm returns the decrypted uh, uh, print, print text. And otherwise, that means uh, some of these inputs are forged, then uh, return the reject symbol. So uh, regarding the lightweight uh, AED mode of operation, uh, the term lightweight usually refers to a primitive that allows a compact implementation in a uh, target platform. So in the hardware implementation, it lightweight means a sm small program and run could print, 
and in the hardware uh, implementation, it means the compact circuit and register areas. So uh, in the case of block cipher-based AA schemes, uh, it requires memories to keep uh, the internal state and plain text and ciphertext blocks. So uh, these memory size, sizes impact on RAM and register sizes. And uh, when implementing the block cipher-based AA schemes, both uh, block cipher and the mode of operation are, are implemented. So these implementations are impact on uh, the program and circuit sizes. So in order to design a lightweight block cipher-based AED uh, mode, that is, uh, these uh, sizes are small, uh, we consider the, these four uh, requirements. So the first requirement is the minimum state size. Uh, so this requirement consider a memory to keep an uh, internal state. So let's consider CVC encryption mode. And uh, in this mode, the n-bit internal state is updated by iterating the key to block cipher uh, like this. So uh, CBC requires an uh, n-bit memory to keep the internal state. Uh, since the memory to keep an internal state impacts on the RAM and register sizes, so the internal state size should be as small as much as possible when designing an uh, uh, AAD uh, mode of operation. And note that using an uh, n-bit uh, block cipher, any AAD mode uh, requires at least uh, n-bit memory, so the minimum state size is n-bit. And the second requirement is uh, online. So uh, this requirement considers the memory to keep a uh, plain text block. Um, uh, in this case, there are two types of mode of operation. The first type is uh, online uh, scheme, uh, where each plain text block is processed only once. So, for example, count, this is counter mode. Uh, counter mode is uh, online schemes, and each uh, plain text, text block, capital M, is uh, processed only once. And the second type is offline schemes, where all plain text blocks uh, are processed twice or uh, more. So, and example schemes, the deterministic, deterministic AAD schemes, SIB and GCM uh, SIB. And these uh, schemes have uh, max and encrypt, encrypt structure uh, like this figure. And so, uh, plain text is input to both MAC and uh, encryption algorithm. So, these schemes require a memory to keep all plain text blocks. So, uh, since the memory to keep uh, plain text block impacts on RAM and register sizes, so a lightweight AAD mode should be uh, online. Uh, so the third requirement is uh, inverse free. So this requirement considers the block cipher implementation. And regarding the implementation, there are two types of uh, mode of operation. So the first type is uh, both uh, block cipher forward algorithm and block cipher inverse are uh, used. And the second type is only forward algorithm is used. So uh, since the latter mode, that is uh, uh, the inverse free mode, do not require the uh, block cipher inverse, so more compact than the uh, former mode for program and circuit sizes. Uh, since the uh, implementation size of uh, block cipher impacts on uh, program and circuit sizes, so a lightweight mode should be uh, inverse free. So the last requirement is XR only. Uh, XR only means uh, that uh, mode consists of only uh, XR operations except for uh, block cipher. So uh, note that uh, XR operation is essential for encrypting a uh, plain text block. So for example, uh, in the counter mode, uh, each plain text block is encrypted using uh, the XR operation. And since an uh, implementation size from our mode operation impacts on program and circuit sizes, so a lightweight mode should be uh, XR only. Uh, however, previous AAD modes do not satisfy uh, some of uh, the four requirements uh, as shown in this table, and especially uh, none of uh, all uh, previous schemes do not satisfy uh, the first requirements. 
solve an open problem from uh, the previous works is to design a block cipher based a AD mode that satisfy uh, the re four requirements. So in our work, uh, in addition to the four requirements for lightweight AD modes, uh, we consider uh, efficient handling of static AD. Uh, that is a very important requirement for AD schemes. Uh, static AD means that the same, same AD is used for every enc encryption procedure. So, for example, uh, packet headers in several protocols are fixed, and so efficient handling of uh, static AD means that if associate data is not changed, then the result of handling associate data is uh, also not changed. So, in this case, the procedure uh, to uh, of handling associated data can be uh, skipped. And um, the, these important AAD modes were designed so that this requirement is satisfied. So this is our result. Uh, we design a block cipher based uh, AAD board of operation uh, called SAB, uh, which is designed based on the sponge style design methodology. So this is the uh, encryption of uh, SAB, and the, the, this part, uh, in this part, associate data block, in this capital A, uh, are processed using the first line. This line is uh, R1 bits. And the remaining line, this line C1 bits, is used for uh, domain separation uh, in this part. And then uh, in the next part, uh, NANCE is processed uh, using the first line. This is line is R2 bits. And the remaining, the second line, this is C2 bits, is used, also used for domain separation. And uh, then uh, in this part, uh, each plain text block, capital M, is processed using the first line. First line is R bits. And the remaining line, uh, regarding the remaining line, this uh, the length is uh, C bits. Uh, uh, the security of SAB depends on the size of this line. And uh, this part is used, used for domain separation. And finally, the authentication tag is uh, defined. So uh, for the security of SAB, uh, SAB, uh, when the size of uh, the second line, uh, C bits, is uh, C is equal to the half of uh, block cipher size, then uh, SAB uh, is secure AAD schemes up, up to uh, this uh, query complexity. Uh, this means uh, SAB achieves the vast amount uh, security. And uh, regarding the five, uh, these five requirements, uh, uh, SA, the internal state size of SAB is uh, n bits, so SAB satisfies first requirement, and SAB is online scheme, and SAB consists of uh, only extra operation like this figure, and SAB is inverse free. And uh, regarding the last requirement, uh, associated data blocks are processed using the first part, and this part accepts only associated data blocks. So when associated data is fixed, then the result, the result is not changed. So SAB uh, satisfies the last requirement. And uh, in the remaining talk, I explain the implementation result. Uh, this is the hardware uh, implementation of SAB, and uh, this part is the block cipher uh, implementation, and this part is the uh, extra hardware implementation from the SAB mode operation. So query the, as you can see, the extra cost from the SAB mode is very, very small. And this is the performance, uh, performance of SAB. And uh, these are hardware performances of SAB are uh, ASIC, left part and right is uh, FPGA. And so the extra uh, sizes from the S SAB model operation is uh, very small compared with the uh, block cipher implementation, uh, in this case, uh, AES. And similarly, uh, for software implementation, the ROM size of uh, the extra ROM size 
uh, from the SAB mode is very small compared with uh, AES. And finally, uh, how the performances of uh, SAB and uh, existing schemes are compared in this slide. And uh, this, the first table compares the performances of SAB, Clock, Silk, and AC, OTR. And uh, from this line, uh, SAB is smaller than these uh, existing uh, schemes. And uh, the table, uh, this, the last next table uh, compare to the, how the performances of SAB and uh, COFB, Econ, Jambu, and ASCON uh, in uh, FPGA. So from this line, from this line uh, SAB is smaller than these uh, existing uh, schemes. So uh, this is conclusion of my talk. Uh, we define the fi uh, these uh, five requirements for lightweight AED modes of operation. Uh, unfortunately, previous block cipher based AID modes do not satisfy uh, some of these uh, requirements. So we present uh, SAB that is a lightweight block cipher based AID mode operation and achieve the base bound security under this condition and satisfy these five requirements. So it offers a compact hardware and uh, software implementations. So that's all. Thank you very much. So we have time for one or two questions. Okay, so you um, define these five requirements, and there's one uh, requirement you explicitly don't mention, um, which is parallelism, and your scheme doesn't satisfy it either. So can you comment on why you don't believe parallelism uh, is a requirement, why it's not needed? Uh, your question is so quite that you so so there's also schemes like counter where you can run the block cipher in parallel for for longer messages. Mm -hmm. uh, you obviously have a sequential thing, and uh, so so why is it that you don't want parallelism as a requirement? Uh, our uh, our target is uh, lightweight devices. So in such devices, I think uh, parallel implementation is is to be difficult. So, uh, in our case, we consider on, uh, we don't consider part of implementation. Okay. Yeah. Over there. Hello. Okay. I just wanted to ask. Uh, it seems kind of surprising. Hello. Okay. Yep. Ah. As long as I hide my face, it works. Okay. Um, so it, I was sort of surprised that you still needed to keep C over two bits or N over two bits of capacity, given that you have a keyed permutation. I was wondering, do you have an attack that, that breaks that if you don't have, if you, if, you have, if you make C smaller, do you know of an attack or does it just make the security proof not work? Or what, you know, why did you choose that? Uh, your question is why we choose this. Why, why is the, C, the value of C, the capacity, why does that have to be N over two? Is there a reason that couldn't be smaller given that you've got a keyed permutation there where an attacker doesn't know the key? Uh, uh, when uh, capacity is smaller than half of the, the size, then uh, if uh, the internal state of R bit is uh, revealed by the encryption for yeah. the rebinding bit, if the remaining is, bit is uh, revealed, then uh, adversary can control or uh, can know all internal states. So in this case, uh, yeah. there exists a forgery uh, using uh, all yeah. the internal states. So you're, okay, I guess you're concerned about like trying many different A's, <laughs> many different associated data until you get a collision on the capacity bits or something? Uh, co uh, for collision of this part? On the C, on the C. bottom part? Uh, uh, only uh, the collision on, on this part is not a problem. Uh, the problem is uh, when collision occurs on all uh, on the B bit, then it becomes uh, the collision is propagated. 
to the uh, following uh, procedure. But only this collision on this part is not a uh, problem. The collision is not, because the collision is not propagated. Right. Okay, thanks. Okay, so let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.